Remember the last time we discussed about receiving Jesus Christ into our lives as our personal Lord and Savior. As we duly established that no church, no priest, no pastor, no bishop, no archbishop or ecclesiastical offices can represent you before God. You go to heaven for yourself. You receive the Lord as your Lord and Savior. Invite him. Could be in your car, in your house, anywhere, in the, in the church. Fine. But you ask the Lord to come into your life and he comes into your life. Okay. Then we go to the second level. The four Gospels tells you all about the Lord and what he came to do in this world, how he lived. We talked about baptizing them in the Holy Spirit, asking them to tarry. Don't go anywhere. Stay where you are until you receive the Holy Ghost. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, then you can go about and tell people about me. Because the will is given to man to you know, to, to choose, to choose what to do with his life. And that's why there's going to be judgment because whatever you decide to do, uh, you may wait for eternity for God to club you on the head or drag you down and do all those things. No, the power has been given to man. Man has tremendous power. They, they acknowledge it when they are creating crowning evil. They acknowledge that they have power. But when it comes to serving God, oh, that's where they have too many explanations. But God God gave man power from the beginning, from the time he created him. He gave him power to be ruler over his world. And he messed that up. He instituted the grace of his son to return us to him. Now that we have returned to him, we will not negate the fact that we have power. We do, as children of God, accept if we decide not to do something about it, God is still not going to grab you and drag you. But you will know that a day comes when every one of us will give account of our lives. You cannot quote another person. No. You cannot say, oh, Lord, let me go and call Adam. Or Adam will say, oh, let me call if it was if It wasn't me. It's, it's not going to happen. You can say the devil made me do it. Yeah, he does. He does. He tells you, oh, go ahead and steal. <laughs> steal. Nothing will happen. But when you do, the consequences does not go on. The devil is a spirit. He spoke to you in your heart. Nobody saw him speak to you. So where will the owners fall? On you. You are the one that is going to go to jail because you broke the law. I'm yeah. reading Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. Colossians says, as you, as you have received the Lord Jesus Christ, so walk ye in him. You repent, and then you turn around. Your life was just going downhill, going south, and then the Jesus interrupted it, and you received him as your Lord and Savior. Yeah, that's wonderful. Then the Bible says, the destination was not. So what do you do? You turn around from the south to begin to go north. You have the right to involve your consciousness, your soul, your spirit into saying, oh, you know, yesterday you used to do this evil and today you say, I do it no more. <laughs> the power of God sets in and that evil leaves your life. Man can lie, but God cannot lie. He says that he knows the thought that he is thinking about you, that they are always the thought of good and not of evil. So the next time the devil is telling you evil, that's not God. God thinks good thought of you. And may God bless you when we... Because I live, ye shall live also.